consider that incomprehensible series of events that brought you to this moment. In a way that we still don't understand, a complex mix of chemicals came together in just the right combination to kick off the evolution of life. Generation after generation of bacteria, insects, fish, lizards, mammals, and eventually humans somehow successfully found a buddy and passed along their genetic material to another generation. Clever humans invented computers and internet, YouTube, and somehow you found your way to this exact video to hear these words. Whoa. It's amazing to consider the universe we live in and how it's perfectly tuned for life. If just a single variable was just a little bit different, life as we know it probably wouldn't exist. Gravity might be a repulsive force. Pokemons might catch you. Doesn't it feel like the universe was created especially for us? I mean, didn't I already tell you that we're all the center of the universe? Everyone is at the center of their own personal observable universe. Sad to say, but this couldn't be further from the truth. The reality is that the universe is 100% completely inhospitable. Well, apart from a thin layer on the surface of our Earth. But that's got to be a rounding error. A fraction of a fraction of a fraction of the teeniest percent of the volume of the universe. The rest of the universe is bunk. If I was plucked out of our cozy environment and dropped into the near vacuum of pretty much anywhere else, the only resource would be a handful of hydrogen atoms. And what can you do with a few hydrogen atoms? Nothing. Might even give Bear Grylls a run for his money. He might have a little more trouble on a star's surface, crisping up in a heartbeat, into a black hole, surface of a neutron star, near an exploding supernova. Please enjoy the crushing pressures and hellish temperatures of Venus, or the freezing irradiated surface of Mars. Earth itself is mostly a death trap. Travel down a few kilometers and you'd bake and crush from the rising temperatures of the Earth's interior. Travel up and the air gets thin and cold and killy. In fact, without our technology heating, cooling, or helping us breathe, we wouldn't last more than a few days on most of the planet. And when you think about the landscape of time, we even live in a brief thumbnail of a moment when Earth is hospitable. Over the next few billion years, the Sun is going to heat up to the point that the surface of Earth will resemble the surface of Venus. And then the last hospitable hidey hole in the entire universe that we know of will wink out. The universe is as inhospitable as it could possibly be. That is without being completely inhospitable. Especially when you consider the time frames and when the long future when all the stars have died and when there's nothing but black holes and frozen matter and the universe finally ditches that rounding error and becomes 100% purely inhospitable. Cosmologists use a term known as the anthropic principle to explain this very special moment we find ourselves in. There's the greater anthropic principle that says the universe wouldn't be here without us to observe it, but that seems nutty and egotistical. And the lesser anthropic principle says that if the universe turned out any differently, we wouldn't be here to observe it. Imagine you threw a dart out of the window of an airplane and it landed in a tiny spot on the surface of the Earth. What were the chances that it would land there? Almost zero. What a lucky spot. You can imagine all kinds of even more inhospitable universes where the conditions were never good enough for life to evolve and so intelligent civilizations could never even ask the question, is our universe perfect for life? So when you look out across the meadow in the springtime, the birds are chirping, there's new growth everywhere, don't forget about the boiling rock magma beneath your feet, the frigid air, and then the vacuum above your head, and then the whole universe of burning, radiating, impacting objects trying their best to kill you. Of all the extreme environments in the universe, which ones do you find most fascinating? Tell us in the comments below. And stick around for the blooper. Thanks for watching. Click subscribe or like it on Facebook, never miss an episode. And if you're into facts like this, here's a link to our Life in the Universe playlist. Thanks to Jason Miller, Nathan Miller, Adrian Rorick, and the members of the Guide to Space community who keep these shows rolling. Love space science? Want to hear episodes before anyone else? Get extras, contests, and shenanigans with Jay, myself, and the rest of the team. Get on the action? Click here.
Audio's rolling. Video's rolling. Yes, fine. I'm the weakest link. <laughs> Y'all the weakest link. Faster. Goodbye. <laughs>